Hi everyone, it's Renee with Delaney Jane Cards. Welcome back to my channel. Today is my monthly collab with Amanda from Rise and Procrastinate. We try to do these monthly. We were pretty good last year, but we're going to start them back up because we really enjoy it. But today's theme is kind of like, um, what was I thinking? You know, you buy that paper pad that you love. You have like four, maybe five, maybe six designs out of all of them that you're like, oh, this is the perfect thing. Mine are those letters and the crosswords. I mean, they are, they're really perfect patterns for my world. The rest of these just kind of sit in the drawer because I don't know what to do with them. I can't be the only one. I know I'm not because I know Amanda has some, what she's going to call ugly paper in her craft room. So this was a pad of paper that I've had for uh, 10 years, probably close to 10 years. And like I said, there was just a couple of designs in there. I think probably one or two even that I liked that I bought the pad for. The rest has just been sitting here collecting dust and getting old. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to use it. So I pulled out a couple of brand new to me stamp sets. I think they're actually brand new on the market. Um, Sabrina from Scrappy Tales Crafts recently launched her line. Um, I picked up the set that I'm going to use for like the furniture and stuff from her set, uh, from her site. And I'll link that below just so you can find her. She's got some really cool stuff. And then the <laughs> two little old people, they're from an MFT set. I will have that linked below uh, so you can find that as well. So I decided to take these, what was I thinking? Oh my gosh, I own the ugliest papers on the planet, papers and a paper piece because it's one of my absolute favorite techniques to do. I think that you can do so much with pattern paper and um, it adds so much character. But these two little chubby old people were just screaming for crazy patterns and um, crazy colors. And it, you'll see that I even went all out and used uh, what was I thinking paper for my background. This card is built on pattern paper. It didn't color much. I colored just a little bit. Um, so here I was just stamping these images onto their little pieces of pattern paper that are going to make up their clothing. And I did leave the coloring in because I like to color and I like to watch color and I cannot be the only one. Um, I didn't bust out my color cam for this video. I need to get that back out and just make sure it all still works. Uh, let me know if you enjoy the color cam. That's the one that's like really close to the paper. Um, but in the meantime, I just did some zoomed in overhead coloring and it's not a ton. I'm going to color this skin tone on this man and this woman, and they are going to be different uh, because, you know, I'm not sure what markers you have in your um, craft space or, you know, your marker collection, um, but you can mix and match uh, some of the markers to create varying skin tones. You don't have to stick with the same blends every time. One of the things that I love to do, and is a tip that I got from um, Sandy Olnack, the great, great <laughs> Sandy Olnack, is to use a BV, a blue violet color, underneath my deepest, darkest shade. It helps to gray out the shadows, which looks more realistic. I understand that these are very cartoon images, um, but sometimes it's nice to have a more realistic coloration to your, even your colored uh, cartoony images. So what I did is I went in the shadows with the darkest, um, well, first with the blue violet, and then I went over top of the blue violet and just slightly beyond with my darkest shade, which is that E17. And now I'm pulling that out with an E13. These are the darker two shades that are going to be in his skin tone. And then I pulled out the E11 to blend this out even a bit farther. And I'm going to be honest, I go almost all the way back to the deepest, darkest section with my marker, kind of pulling that older color, I'll call it the older color, but the previous color that I put down, pulling that out. Um, it just helps blend a lot better for me. That's how I have 
become accustomed to and comfortable with coloring. Um, I will also say that I absolutely hated coloring uh, with markers until I did get my Copic markers. Um, and I have, I've had them for, for quite a while. Um, I don't, I don't know, since 2013, 2014. Oh, here I'm pulling out an even lightest shade, a, an even lighter shade, the lightest shade here for the highlight on his bald head and his nose. Uh, it's an E, hmm, what is it? An E double zero. Hold on. I'm going to make noise while I look. E triple zero. So that's his little skin tone there. Um, but yeah, my markers are getting very old. Um, I finally had to bust down and or break down and buy some refills. I did find a couple of places that still had the old refills. So I was very ecstatic for that. Um, but I've been picking up the, the regular refills on the markers that I use the most. Um, even some markers that I don't use the most, I guess, um, I've just had them so long and have used them over time enough that they were kind of dry. Um, and then I did treat myself to filling out a new hex chart because, you know, Copic markers do fade over time. And, uh, if your chart is in the sun at all or anything like that, it can, um, fade even faster. Um, so I did fill a new one of those out too. So that's kind of what I've been up to lately. Um, but see his skin tone doesn't look purple and it has lots of depth to it. And even that highlight from where I made his little bald head stand out. So for her skin tone, I wanted to go a little bit different. Now this E07, a lot of people have this marker in their collection and they never touch it because they don't know what to do with it. It is amazing for skin tone. And I'm going to show you here. I thought she looked like she could have a little bit more of a reddish skin tone. We could give her some dark hair. I just think it'll look really well, really nice together. Uh, so I did the E07. Now I did not put a BV under this red combination at all, or this reddish earth tone combination. Um, I pulled this E07 out with the E04. I'm fairly certain that when I got my first set of like skin tone markers, they come in like a five or six collection that Copic has. It had the E07 and the E04 in them. I think I, I might be wrong, but I really never knew what to do with them. This is what you do with them. You make this skin tone. I mean, there's some, there's lots of other ways to use them. And I have but this is one of those markers. So here I'm pulling that E04 and E07 out with the E02. It is a very peachy, um, I guess, peachy beige, and it's going to um, make this appear less red and more beige. But you can still see that there is a, a big difference, a varying difference in her skin tone versus his. Now the latest color I'm using on her face is the E01. So that was a very simple in family blend E07, E04, E02, and E01. And you get this really good uh, skin tone here that, <clears throat> excuse me, that um, is in family. So it's not hard to blend. Um, and it looks like you did a lot of work and, and it was just the markers that did it. So one of the really fun things about paper piecing is that that's kind of the, the, all of the coloring. I mean, I still have to go back and do their hair and stuff, but as far as their skin and, you know, I don't have to color them, uh, that part's done, but I don't like putting flat pattern paper onto an image that I've kind of already started making three dimensional with the shading. So here, I have what is going to be his little shirt, the pattern paper that is going to be a shirt. And I'm going to go ahead and shade this with some E40 family markers because it is kind of a cream based pattern paper. And I'm going to shade this before I go any farther. So before I cut it apart, before I paste it onto him, I'm going to go ahead and shade it. Now I'm also going to shade the pattern paper that I'm using for his pants with the same set of markers. 
Um, you can see that these are some crazy patterns to use together. And every time I do this kind of stuff, all I think back to is my Opa. And he, <laughs> he was German. And he came here in um, 1953 with a wife and two children in tow. And I guess fashion <laughs> was not his thing. <clears throat> I remember these burgundy pants that he used to wear all the time. And I swear to you, he wore it with like this green printed shirt every time. Like they did not go together. They, it wasn't even like, oh, how can I relate this? It wasn't even like maroon and like a deep earthy green that could maybe look good together. No, this was like, like a bright Kelly green <clears throat> and like a maroon pants. It, it was, oh, it was something else, but everything had a pattern to it too. They just, uh, he liked certain things and it didn't matter if they matched or not. He was going to wear them. And I feel like at some point in my life, um, I'm just not going to care what anybody thinks and I'm going to end up dressing the, the same. <laughs> so here I'm shading her crazy apron. I thought this was a really cute pattern for an apron. Like, I know this is the, what was I thinking? This is a really ugly pattern paper, kind of a challenge that Amanda and I are doing, but this, this is really kind of cute after I turn it sideways and, you know, shade it and decide that it's going to be an apron. It's really cute. Uh, I could totally see one of my grandmas wearing this back, you know, back in their day. Um, my Opa, the one that I'm talking about, looks, looked very much like this gentleman in this stamp set, but his wife, my granny did not look like her. My grandma, um, <laughs> my mom's mom looked very much like this. We actually called her great. It, a uh, long story, but she wasn't my great grandma, but we called her great. Um, is she looked very much like this one. So it, it's just absolutely hilarious to me that these two are paired up in this stamp set. And this is a stamp set by MFT. It's a newer one and they nailed it with these characters. They're so cute. Um, but I just shaded what will be her dress. Now here, this is, <laughs> this is the couch. This is the couch that every family had. Every family have this, but, but maybe not in these colors. Maybe it was like brown and orange and yellow floral pattern. It, that's, that's what I'm thinking. Like that's the, the time that I'm thinking about, but I thought this pattern paper made the perfect couch. So I'm just shading this up with the same E markers. Now these markers go with all these pattern papers because they all came from the same pack. So if you have one of these packs of papers, pads of papers that you have just them couple of papers that you like and everything else is kind of like, oh, what was I thinking? If that was on its own, I would not have bought that. You can do something like this and know that whatever you're going to shade with should work for all of the, the papers because they come, they come from the same, you know, pad of paper. Usually they go together. Usually you can flip through and see if they don't all go together, you can see that some of them do. They'll put colors or a feeling or it'd be like all muted or something like that. Oh, so I am going to color. Let's see. What else am I going to color? I believe I color oh, the little pictures. Now these are from Sabrina's set and it is to make like the inside for a pop up house card. Ooh, I'm going to make some noise again because I'm going to see if I can dig it out and find the name. I will, <clears throat> like I said, link it below, but it's a really cute, uh, collection that she had that had all of the, oh, she doesn't actually label. I'll have to just look. She doesn't actually label her packaging, which I found a little disappointing. Um, <clears throat> because I like that when the name is on stuff, it just means that I have to label it, which is fine. <laughs> um, but her, this little set that you can pick up at Sabrina's store it has all this cute furniture in it that you can put inside your little pop-up house. It's adorable. So there's a couple of pictures and a table and I think like a chair and table set, like a little cafe set and this couch. And there's, there's several other pieces and it is so stinking adorable. 
but it was the perfect size for the background for this card for these little people. <laughs> and I just thought that they, it turned out so good. Like I could totally see myself standing there as a little kid with, you know, pigtails like grandma, um, can I go sit on the couch and watch TV with you? And, uh, her being like, well, there's already a pillow. Go ahead and lay down. I, this, there was a whole, I mean, this is my childhood right here in this card. There was, there was crazy wallpaper and it didn't match the tile that didn't match the wainscoting that didn't match the, the tablecloth that didn't match the curtains in my grandparents' house. And it was just always so warm and inviting that it didn't match. It was just eclectic and wonderful. And I wanted to kind of bring a little bit of that feel to this card, especially because of the paper that I chose for my background. I thought it definitely screamed eclectic and grandma's house. And I just thought it was really neat. Um, here I'm going to go ahead and, and color her hair black. Um, you know, I'm using warm grays. Pretty could have used any of the gray colors to do this. I'm just flicking in some darker color. She's got like a side bun going on. And I'm also going to give him um, some gray hair as well. Some like was black, but now is gray. I just thought it fit their skin tone and the way that they're drawn so perfectly. My Opa also had like the, the like strip around his head that still had hair, um, and was completely bald on top. It was just, he was so, uh, he was one of those people that if anybody met him, they just loved him. He just had this way about him that was just, um, comforting and amazing. And he, they had this, they both had a very thick, thick German accent and uh, we live here in Wisconsin, so they, of course, had that accent. And then uh, in my late teens, they moved to South Carolina. So they picked up that really southern drawl that is in South Carolina. Plus, they had that mix of English and German language that they spoke just naturally. They would throw in those German words. That if you didn't didn't know the German words, you, you might be lost. Um, and then they had the, the Midwestern Wisconsin. I mean, it was, it was hard to understand them if you didn't know them. Honestly, I mean, I feel bad for all of the people that they had to talk to on the phone. Oh, I can't even imagine not being able to see their facial expressions and stuff to understand exactly what they're talking about. <laughs> but enough about my grandparents, right? I mean, you came here to see this video. Um, here I am fussy cutting this apron. So I am cutting directly on the line or within the line of the pieces. And I don't think that I end up showing you everything here, um, but I cut the apron out and now I'm going to cut out just the dress. I'm going to leave the apron, you know, on the dress. I'm not going to cut the little pieces because the apron goes on top of the dress. Um, so there's no need to actually like fussy cut that out, but I'm going to go ahead and cut this piece out. I have these big scissors. I got them at a scrapbook expo many years ago. I think they're very similar to what is on the market now, um, by the Tim, Tim Holtz Ranger scissors, but mine are like, um, a hard handle. They don't have any soft give or anything to them but I love them. <laughs> I think that they work so well. Here I am fussy cutting out my couch. Um, I did cut off the legs of the couch because I did color those with some wood colors. Uh, maybe I didn't do that yet, but I end up coloring them with some wood colors and just piecing this couch um, pattern on there. And here again, I am cutting on the line, basically like within the line. So when you, when you paper piece, a lot of times it's really easy to use, um, stamps that have like thicker lined images, you know, like these are pretty fine lines, but a lot of times if they have a thick line, they're really easy to paper piece. I did a video recently where I paper pieced, um, I think a gnome and, uh, 
it had thicker lines and it was way easier to do. Oh, so here I realized that I had not colored her legs because she's wearing a dress or her shoes. Um, and I had not colored his shoes either. I don't know if I had decided like to try something else or if I was going to paper piece them, but they're just tiny little things. And I think I end up going over them anyway. So I'm also going to fussy cut this couple. Now, if you have coordinating dies, you could just, you know, die, cut them out. And that does work really nice. Um, when you have the white border from your piece that you're coloring and then you piece on your, your paper, it looks really nice for my scene. I did not want to have any like white border. So I'm going to go ahead and fussy cut these on the line. And I left this in because you can see I'm actually resting my hand with the scissors on my glass mat, like uh, my wrist or even almost the ball of my hand is sitting on the glass mat. I'm not really moving or manipulating my scissors too much. I am not snipping them all the way closed. What I'm cutting the paper with is the very intersection of where my blades cut. I'm hardly even squeezing it. And I'm turning the paper with my left hand. That is my non-dominant hand. Um, so I am turning the paper with my non-dominant hand and it allows me to get a beautiful cut. I'm also, this is real time here. I'm cutting this pretty slowly. So if you think, oh my gosh, everybody cuts their stuff so fast. They don't. Everybody doesn't. I don't. I mean, I'm not sure what anybody else does, but don't compare yourself to anybody else. This is just, if you've never seen this done, this is how you do it. You really take your time. You can see that I cut off all the extra paper. Um, and then I went and like cut the space that's between her feet and the bottom of her dress. I cut that out separately to finish and to add kind of a very, um, finished edge to your pieces. You can take a water-based marker. This is a Tombow marker. It's black and I'm just running it along the edge. You can see that I have the image in my non-dominant hand and I have it facing away from my marker because if I slip with my marker while I'm coloring the edge of this, I don't want to draw on my person that I had just took all that time to color. So I am um, just running this along the edge and what it does is just takes off that white core. It'll help blend anything. Like if you have something with a line that you're trying to blend, it will help like here where I cut these pieces out and I cut like on the line, um, within the line or right inside the line, I'm going to add this black edge to it. Uh, and it's going to help mask or camouflage my cutting edge when I put this all together. Um, somebody that doesn't know paper crafting, uh, has never seen a card made, has never made a card themselves, just the, you know, regular Joe Schmo might not know that this is a bunch of different pieces of pattern paper when they're looking at this. They might think that this is printed somehow and um, you've just done a really good job of making clothes with crazy patterns on them. So there's a couple of tips and tricks for you if you decide that you want to paper piece. Um, I did the same thing here with the couch. I don't know why I left it all in, but I guess if you've never seen this before, there you go. There's a bunch of examples. <laughs> So here's my couch. And I think at this point I decide that, um, oh, I didn't color the legs yet. I have no idea why I didn't. You'd think that I would have done that first since I'm like, oh, maybe I did. And I'm just not seeing it. I don't know. Um, so I pieced the pattern paper onto the couch and set that one off to the side to dry. Now I'm going to do her dress. And like I said, when I cut this out, I left it as one piece. So it's the apron and the dress all together. And now I'm going to place the apron over top. And because I shaded everything before I cut it out and then went around the edges with the black marker, it looks like a solid image, like one single image. 
for him, I put his pants on first. <laughs> this sounds so funny. I put his the paper down that's his pants. But I left kind of a piece up at the top that has part of the shirt. Um, mainly because I didn't want to have that like waist line. I, if I didn't cut it, you know, perfectly, I didn't want to have a gap. So I'm cutting the shirt out you know, on all the lines, but the pants, I kind of gave him a little extra tab up at the top. And here I decided I better color these suspenders before I put this on his body. And I used a silver gel pen to do like the little metal adjuster straps on his suspenders. And then just used a blue marker to, um, put his suspenders. Did your grandparents wear suspenders? My Opa did. He had some that were like, Oh, rainbows and American flags and the the measuring tape, like um, measuring tape was my favorite ones. Um, so this, this guy really does really remind me of him. So here I'm just kind of making sure that all of my pieces are kind of the scale that I want them to be. Um, with Sabrina's set, I did use the coordinating dies to cut those out because they're in the background. Um, and I didn't really think that I wanted to fussy cut all that. <laughs> so this is that crazy, what was I thinking pattern paper that I decided to use. And I selectively cut this panel from the six by six pad because you see that one that's kind of above his head there that is a clock. I wanted to keep that one and I wanted it to kind of be in the furniture setup so that uh, it could be a clock on the wall. I also made sure that the hello friend, the hey you, and there is another sentiment up there that they were legible and uh, facing the right direction and, you know, kind of in the scene. And the word love is between the, the couple. I, it took me a long time to decide how to cut that piece of pattern paper. And I really, I'm glad that I did it that way. I think the card turned out just phenomenal uh, with all of these, what was I thinking, pattern papers. But like I said, if you have some in your stash that you're like, I have no idea what I'm going to do with this, there are all sorts of really cool ways to use what you might consider ugly pattern paper um, or, you know, that pattern paper that is just not at the top of your list of things you want to use. There's all sorts of really creative ways that you can use them and incorporate them and stop hoarding stuff that you're not super drawn to. You know, as a paper crafter, I have a ton of paper and I have a very tiny space. So I try to use what I have as much as possible. And like I said, this pattern paper is probably, I don't know, close to 10 years old. I would have to look, but I, I want to say it was from 2013, maybe 2012. It's pretty old, um, but it's still good. And um, I think it made a really cute, relevant card. Uh, I, I don't like when people say that things expire. I don't think that stamps and dies expire. I don't think that pattern paper expires. Um, I recently heard that glue expires. That's new. Um, I think what happens is trends change and then people feel like they have to hop on the new trend and can't use what they have because it isn't fancy and new anymore. But those trends come back around. A lot of the stuff that's on the market, I have something similar that might be 10 years old. I'm sure if you've been doing this a while, you've seen that. Those things that, you know, go out of style, come back. So if you don't mind not having, you know, that exact stamp set, but you could do this with something else, go ahead, keep what you got. If you aren't looking to make, you know, money and have affiliate links and all that kind of stuff with brand new products, go ahead and use what you have. I mean, I do. I love using what I have. It also keeps me from spending my family's grocery budget on, you know, stamps and dies. So here I decided that the love, like kind of, these are like all embroidery hoops in the background. So that's why it made me think of like grandma's house. But I decided that that love um, embroidery hoop was going to kind of be like a rug. So I'm going to set my little vignette scene kind of thing um, up so that it looks like a rug um, for under the couch, like in the 
sitting, is it a sitting room or a living room or a, what is it by you? And is this a couch or is it a Davenport? Because I know that's another name for it. But. By getting these pattern papers from the same pad, they all coordinate. So you can see that that paper on the couch and the background paper, they work just fine together. There's no reason for me to uh, dig out anything else. Though I do love the challenge of using pattern papers from different paper pads. I love that. I think it is super fun. I also like this where I'm mixing and matching different uh, stamp companies and stamp styles kind of to create what I want. Um, an artist, a real true artist that let's say paints pictures, they use paint um, to, to color in what they want to do. I love to use somebody else's artwork to create my own. <laughs> I like to use their pattern paper that they created, even if it's ugly. <laughs> and I like to use the images that they have drawn, even if I have to color them. I think it helps me with my creativity when I can honor somebody else's by really using what they took the time to design. The person that designed this pad of paper really loved each and every design that they put in there. I can't see why somebody wouldn't. It's their, it's their hard work. And if I have paper that's just sitting there and I think it's a terrible idea that I own it, I feel like it's kind of a disservice to them and their imagination and their creativity and their hard work. And this is a really good way to honor them and put a little story together. Like this is my grandma's house and here's the things. It's also a really fun way to make cards. And I love the sentiments that were in the stamp set. This one says, um, if things improve with age, you're, you're approaching magnificent, I think, um, which is super fun. And um, I just thought that it would be a really good card to give for a birthday. And uh, I thought it would, it would put a smile on somebody's face. So here I'm using a black glaze pen. I did replace mine. If you've been following the saga of my black glaze pen, you know that mine actually exploded inside the barrel, which was like oozing out the bottom. So I had to be really careful. Anyway, I finally decided to buy one. <laughs> so that's my brand new black glaze pen. Say hi to it. And I'm using some, what are you? Spectrum Noir. <laughs> Uh, clear overlay glitter pen, the one with the long name. I'm using that for the glasses and the vase. And then I'm going to go ahead and use some glossy accents on her glasses and on his to add a little bit of shine. I probably could have put it on like the pictures. I did put it on the vase. Did I put it on the pictures? Oh, I did. Look at that. Me and the previous me that made this, we're on the same page. So I would guess that I let this dry for, you know, an extended period of time before I did anything else to it. But you can see that that was, that was not the case. I was already using a black glaze pen. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go ahead and stamp the inside. This is my Couture Creations <clears throat> Precision Stamp Press. It's, I've had it for a while. I have a review on my channel when I first got it and I do reach for it quite often. So if you're looking for something that's slightly inexpensive, this could be a good alternative. I use it quite a bit, but I also use all of the other ones. So, you know, it is what it is. Took a little piece of that pattern paper that I had and stamped that at the bottom. And then I did paper piece a little, another little chair from Sabrina's set with some of the same pattern papers that I had used. And I added that to the inside. I did that off screen and I also did not leave a border. I did a fussy cut that one because it's going on the inside. So that is what's on the inside of my card. And I must have well, didn't let everything dry because had it been dry, I would have turned it over and used my ATG gun. So, well, look, there's some love sending it inside the card. <laughs> I do like that Nouveau Blue. I've been using that for a while. I like uh, that the bottle is easy to squeeze, though that bottle has been giving me all sorts of trouble. It is the first bottle ever that I have had to unclog every time I use it. It drives me absolutely bonkers. The other day I took it all the way apart, and like washed the nozzle out. So hopefully it doesn't do that again. 
Um, I don't think it's done it since, but it was, it was, just, the struggle was real. So that is my card. It does look like everything is dry here. You can see how beautiful that glossy accents is. And that pattern paper wasn't too bad in the end, was it? So let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure you stop by Amanda's channel and let her know that I sent you. And as I always say, give cards generously. Bye.